Thank you so much for tuning into my channel. This is your Ordinary Jage collabing with the Steve Schwartz from LSAT Unplugged. Um, today we're going to talk about a lot of new things uh, like LSAT Flex, which is pretty much I think it's LSAT's um, way of kind of coping and adjusting to the whole COVID crisis that's going on. Um, so yeah, I guess we'll just dive right in. Yeah, sure. Thanks for having me, Jage. Nice, nice to connect with you again. Yeah, it's been a long time, but here we are. Back at it. Here we are. Yep. I missed all the changes. As you said, LSAT Flex, biggest change I've seen in my career. It's really incredible how quickly they got that going. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about that. So like, what does that look like for LSAT takers? I know it's like mostly for like April test takers, people that were registered for April, right? Yeah, exactly. So for now, it's just for people in North America who were registered for the March or April LSATs. And they put it, they basically, they put it online because they couldn't administer the LSAT in person due to stay at home orders and such. But my guess is that it's going to be, this is going to be the way going forward. Wow. So like, okay, I read up a little bit on it, but like, I'm still a little bit confused. On, is it basically just like online? Like it is, but with a few changes that are actually kind of significant. So first off, it's three sections, not five. Well, Big change. First, yeah. <laughs> these five section tests all this time. And now they have three sections. So what exactly. are the three sections? So it's one games, one logical reasoning, and one reading comprehension. No experimental and no second logical reasoning. So it's a lot shorter. They nearly, they've cut it nearly in half. Wow. So, okay. So is it still the same time? Like so many questions in 35 minutes? Yeah. That's all the same. Wow. Crazy. Yeah. I mean, so it's, for a lot of people, it's going to be a lot more pleasant because it's only two hours. It used to be, five sections with the break. And then the writing sample used to be in person also. So it used to really be six 35 minute sections plus a break. Now you've cut it to less than half from that two hours, three sections back to back and you're done. And you also get to do it in the comfort of your own home. Oh, that was, that's my, that was my next question. Like, okay, so where do they take this? So I don't have to go anywhere. So I know, okay. So I took the online writing one last year. Yeah. And like, whenever, like wherever, you know, I mean, of course they can take it at home, but like, is there like a scheduled time for it or do they just take it when they can take it? Well, so the writing sample, you could do pretty much any time, but the online LSAT flex, you're going to book specific time slots. Cause okay. that's actually going to have, that's going to have live proctoring and they're going to also record all of that too, but they're having cohorts yeah. of people do it. So the May LSAT flex will be primarily May 18th and May 19th you'll book certain time slots. I'm guessing it'll be, they'll have a morning slot and an afternoon slot, but I, and I'm hoping they'll have an evening slot too. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So, um, so since it's shorter and like there's less to it, is it like more difficult then? We don't know exactly what it's going to be in terms of difficulty overall. They are saying that it's going to be equal. The questions will be of equal difficulty. One open question, though, is the raw score conversions. How many can you get wrong or how many can you get right to get a particular scaled score out of 180? That's an open question, but they have confirmed that both the individual questions and the section difficulty overall will be the same. Wow, that's crazy. Dang. So, like, okay, so do they just need a computer or, like, what kind of equipment do they need in order to take the this LSAT? So you've got to have a computer, either a Windows or Mac, and tablets aren't good. Your smartphone's not good. It's got to be an actual computer. And if you don't have one, they'll provide you with a loaner. And if your home environment's not good for it, either if it's too noisy at home or if your internet's kind of shaky, they'll provide you with a place to take it. Yeah, gosh. Gotcha. But I think the proctoring okay. is really interesting, though, because the proctoring, people always ask me about security. Like, aren't people going to cheat? And first off, I don't really know how you would cheat on the LSAT because it's not memorizing facts, right? Like, there's only so much you could put on a, a post-it note or an index card that would really help you out. It's more like extra time would be a big benefit, but I don't see a way to game that unless you're like a, a master hacker or something. But they are like, to make sure that nobody's helping you while you're taking it, they've got you monitored with a webcam and a microphone and they're recording everything and they even track your eye movements using what they call AI. Dang, yeah. I, I should have known. Like literally Elsa does not, Elsa does not play around. When I had, um, <clears throat> when I took the online like writing test, they had me literally like turn my computer around and like 
like do like a scanning of the entire room to make sure no one was in there and like then they recorded the entire thing so yeah they don't play around i expected nothing but that honestly like because they don't they don't do cheating but they're very serious about it and they're also not new to this the company that's doing the security is called proctor u and they they're also doing the gre they're also doing the gmat they're also doing high school advanced placement exams so they've been doing this for a while with many other exams too. So they were the natural choice to go to for LSAC to put the LSAT online since they've already got all that stuff figured out. Sweet. Wow. Okay. Well, I mean, so, okay. So what did you say that people taking LSAT flex kind of have it like a little easy? I'd say it's like, a more, it's definitely a, a more, I would definitely choose LSAT flex if I had the choice I would go yeah. for LSAT Flex, assuming I've got a good computer and a good internet connection. To me, it's a no-brainer because it's a more pleasant test day experience. You got exactly yeah, two it's hours like, and you're done. Yeah, not only that, but you don't have to like drive somewhere. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And like in your head about like the testing experience. Like, well, I feel like the the test anxiety would be a lot lower um, because of the fact that you don't have to go to a testing center. You don't have to like see other people taking it you know what i mean and like compare yourself or like you know what i mean because i know for me <laughs> when i took it the last time i'm like there were people that had been there like that took it that took it like once and got like 160 and just wanted a higher score and it's just like a little bit intimidating when you hear those conversations at the testing center and you're about to go in there and take it and like you know what i mean so like i just feel like that's that's really nice i think it's really good honestly that these people have like the opportunity to not have to deal with that but um yeah, that's, yeah no, that's I agree 100%, especially one of the other distractions would always be at the testing center, the person next to you is like shuffling in their chair or racing really vigorously, or even worse, what if they're sneezing or coughing? In the past, that was just an annoyance. Now we're all going to be paranoid that we're going to catch something, right? <laughs> exactly, yeah. So, I mean, I guess that, yeah. That's, there is one consideration, though, that's kind of interesting that might not make the LSAT Flex a no-brainer for everybody, even if they have a good computer and internet and such, which is logical reasoning used to be half the exam. Now it's only one third of the exam. And LSAC said they're going to weight all questions equally. So logical reasoning has diminished in importance and logic games and reading comprehension have increased in importance. So if logical reasoning was your strong suit, maybe you want to hold off for the regular LSAT unless you can boost up games and reading comp more. So they've actually changed the equation a little bit there. Mm, wow. Dang. That's crazy. So like last year, <clears throat> I looked at like a few different, like different um, test prep websites and things like that. And it's kind of told us like a little bit of like what's going to be on the test. Not necessarily like, oh, this is the question you're going to get, but like types of questions, like strengthening questions, weakening questions, stuff like that. So like what can people expect to see if you know um, on LSAT Flex? All the content's going to be the same. So you're going to have strength and weaken, necessary assumption, must be true on logical reasoning. Games and reading comp, identical as well. The content of the exam has not changed at all. And so any previous exam studying you've done would still be perfectly relevant. I would just say that if somebody was giving logical reasoning more attention because it was half the exam, I would change that ratio a little bit and adjust the study plan to maybe reduce logical reasoning a little bit and put some more work in on the games and reading comp, assuming that you have roughly equal work to do in all three sections. Mm. Okay. So, okay, so I know we're talking about LSAT Flex and like what to expect there, but also as far as like admissions in general, like what changes can we see there due to like the whole COVID crisis? Well, first off, law schools are gonna be really understanding about the whole situation. So first off, they're, they're treating LSAT flex scores equivalent to regular LSAT. So people have been asking, will they take LSAT flex less seriously? No, they won't. They really do trust LSAC to provide a good exam that's, that's valid and reliable and the scores to be equated similarly. So I wouldn't worry about anything on that end. Law schools are also extending deadlines to wait for the results of the LSAT flex since the March and April LSATs were canceled, they're not going to cut people off and deny them the opportunity to apply. And they also need the applicants. So they have reason and incentive to extend those deadlines. Then with regards to undergraduate GPA, spring semester of college, a lot of college students right now are worried about their performance there or going past fail, as many schools are. And I would just encourage applicants, 
don't worry about any of that. Law schools are very understanding of the situation. They're very aware that this has been a major change for everybody worldwide, and especially colleges moving online and such, whether they go pass fail or not, they know it's a unique situation. You can write an addendum about it, but they'll also understand that it's just assume that they'll know what was going on. And don't write a personal statement about how COVID affected you because everyone's got a story like that. Obviously, yeah. if you could put a unique spin on it, there's always exceptions to that rule. But I can imagine that they're going to be reading a lot of essays about this. And at a certain point, most of them start to look the same. Mm -hmm. Hear that, people? Hear that? Yeah, don't talk about COVID because we all had to deal with it. Okay, got it. Okay, so um, so how will an LSAT flex score relate to a score from the standard LSAT? It's going to be treated the same. It's going to be on the 120 to 180 band, just the same. And so I wouldn't worry too much about them looking at the results differently. People ask me I got, if I got a higher score on the regular LSAT and lower on the flex or vice versa, does that matter? No, not really. Even a high score on the flex won't be looked at any differently. Law schools have no incentive to do that either because they can still report your LSAT flex score to the ABA, which then brings it to the US News Rankings just the same. They have no reason to do it, no incentive to do it, and they trust LSAC to equate everything properly. So I wouldn't worry too much about the results being looked at differently. And LSAC has done a lot of work on their end also to educate law schools and to have meetings with law schools where I've heard admissions officers say just that. Yeah, gotcha. Okay. Um, and sorry, one more time, just so I can make sure that my, correct, my question is correct, what I'm about to ask you. So for eligibility for LSAT Flex, is it it's just, sorry, it's for the April test takers, correct, Ian? Yeah, correct. So it's only in North America right now, and it's only okay. for people who were going to take April. But, and many people who were initially scheduled for March and had to move to April, which then got canceled too. But going forward, I expect it will be open registration at some point in the future. The June LSAT is still scheduled to go ahead in person. I don't see that happening. It's on June 8th, so it's kind of early in June also. And some states have stayed home till June 10th or beyond, so I don't see that happening. I expect June LSAT will also be rescheduled as an LSAT flex. And going forward, I think if the public health situation warrants no more in-person gatherings that are not essential, like the LSAT, then they're going to have to make it LSAT flex probably at least throughout the duration of this crisis, however long that goes on. So if it's only in North America that like we have this accommodation or whatever you want to call it, um, then so are they still taking like the regular LSAT like in person in other countries? So no, they're not. The, the March LSAT was going to be international also. That one got canceled, of course. There is also a June international LSAT scheduled in late June. My prediction is that that one will be canceled also. And if that one is canceled, they'll probably make that a flex too. They can't let international takers go on for months and months and months without being able to take, to take the LSAT. And given that it's over the internet, as long as people have a good device and good internet connection, I don't see any reason they couldn't do that. I just think for now, since this is the first time they're doing it, they want to keep the population relatively small to minimize issues and to help them work out the kinks logistically too. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. And you also mentioned accommodations. And so I was thinking about accommodations like extra time or for those with special needs, disabilities and such. And anyone who has accommodations for the regular LSAT, LSAC will provide them for the online LSAT flex also. If they could do it online, like extra time, that's pretty, a pretty easy adjustment. If it, there's other issues though, then LSAC will make it right. Reach out to them and they'll provide you with the accommodations, even if that requires a very small or even private testing center experience with a proctor to provide you with whatever you need. Sweet, sweet, sweet. So, um, so what do you feel like is the best way to prepare for a test like this? Simulate like game day. So three sections, not five, do it at the same desk. You'll do the actual thing on the same device. You'll do the actual thing as always make everything as similar as possible. I was even talking with a student earlier today who's talking about drinking tea to calm herself down. And I'm a big fan of tea also. And so we were talking about like chamomile, herbal teas. And I was saying, drink the same tea during your practice test that you'll do on the actual day. Yeah. 
And obviously make sure your internet connection is strong, as strong as possible. Make sure you've got your device with all the updates run on it, running smoothly. Don't practice on one thing and then assume it's gonna be good on a different one. Gotcha. I think the timing though is the biggest thing, like three sections, not five. And also getting your, whoever you live with, if you live with anybody, get them to, to keep it quiet for those two hours. Mm -hmm. Cool. That's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um, so since it's shorter, uh, will like, can we expect to have like quicker results or like, you know, get those faster? They are going to get the results back faster, at least for the male side flex. They're going to do it in two weeks, not three, which is not that much faster. I think they should provide them immediately or at least give you an estimated score immediately. They have the ability to do it. They just are really sticklers for all the data and making sure that all their number crunching is correct. So they take some time on that. But for the male sat flex, since law schools want those results ASAP for the cycle finishing up now, LSAC is taking quick action on it. And so I'm hoping that with time, that the other LSAT flexes will be even faster with the results. So we'll see. And you know, many, many people in the test prep industry, myself included, have asked them to give those results back faster. And I'm hoping they will with time. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, it's again, like you said, it's only like a week more, but still, I mean, just to not have to deal with that, you know what I mean? That waiting game, that's awesome. Yeah, it gives <laughs> students a lot of stress, especially not knowing the exact day you'll get them back. And in years yeah. past, LSAC used to say, we'll give you the scores by this date and then randomly release them a few days earlier. So people never knew when they were coming, which was very frustrating then they start releasing them on the actual day. And so now they're saying for the male side flex, they'll release results by June 5th, which indicates they could come sooner. I'm hoping that they will actually announce a specific date so people aren't frantically hitting refresh all the time. Gotcha. So, excuse me. So for this year, I know we talked about a lot of different, last year we talked about a little bit about dates and how like they're kind of increasing the chances that you have to take the, the exam or whatever. So how many dates do we have this year for the LSAT? Well, the LSAT is scheduled to be offered nearly every month, like nine or 10 times a year. So we've got scheduled right now, aside from May LSAT Flex, we've got June, July, August, October, November, and so on. So nearly every month, but a handful of those could be canceled and rescheduled as LSAT Flex. We don't really know. It all depends on how the situation unfolds. I think it's pretty safe to say the June 8th LSAT will be canceled and rescheduled as a flex sometime in the following month. As far as preparation, what's your advice for LSAT takers this entire year, whether it's LSAT flex or regular LSAT? What do you think, or just your advice on LSAT takers this year? Well, the fundamentals all remain the same. So you still want to use all your practice tests, still study the basics of each section, games, reasoning, reading, comp. And then for the test day experience, if you don't know which one you're going to do, flex or regular three sections or five do a bit of both do some three section exams and do some five section exams and even if you do the flex with three but you were practicing for five not a huge downside there if anything you've built your endurance beyond what you actually need for test day like preparing to do a full marathon and only running a half a half would right. seem easy after that and maybe you've overtrained so you don't want to run the risk of burning out of course but otherwise i think just three sections back to back then you take your break for flex, you'd be done, but then for regular, you continue on and do two more. That's awesome. That's awesome. Such good advice. Well, I want to do. I do want to ask this because I've used um, a specific like um, LSAT like prep material. Oh my goodness, sorry. Sorry. Uh, so I've used like yeah. So I've used a specific LSAT um, prep. I cannot talk right now. I'm so sorry. Oh my gosh. So. I've used a specific LSAT prep um, material like throughout my entire process, the entire year and a half that I was preparing for it, I used the same thing. Um, so, but like, I don't know if it was necessarily like good for me to use that because it was all videos and the videos were rather like slow and they kind of like weren't very capturing and I'm a very like, I need to be, it, like it has to be entertaining a little bit, at least a little bit for me to like continue paying attention to it. And they were like hour to two hour videos and like it was just a little bit rough to like train or prep with that um so what do you like is there any specific like prep book prep course anything like that that you would recommend yeah absolutely and i'm a little biased here admittedly but i'm a high, big fan of my own courses i've got courses and i've got guides as well and one thing i really emphasize is 
boiling things down to the essence. So you're not gonna see any two hour videos from me. Most of my foundational videos are like three minutes or five minutes. I prepare what I would say in advance so I don't ramble on and on and on. And you'll see that in my YouTube videos as well. I, a lot of them, especially ones with, with PowerPoints, I cut it down to the basics and I cut out whatever fluff is unnecessary. And my guides do the exact same thing. I, I think the world doesn't need another 500 page LSAT book, especially covering only one section of the three. A lot of books collectively are over a thousand pages and nobody has time for that. I used to have to reward myself by watching an episode of Chappelle's show after every single chapter I completed just to help motivate me to get through that. So I try boiling it down and I've updated everything constantly first for the digital LSAT, now for the LSAT Flex. And I've got on-demand videos, but I've also got live online classes and Q&As and group coaching. So you, you can actually attend live and get your questions answered. To me, there's nothing more engaging than attending something live and being able to contribute to the process and hear from other students and shape the direction of the curriculum. So I really co-create my courses with my students specifically to address their needs and handle their questions. And to me, there's nothing more engaging than that. Boom, you heard it here first, people. Steve Schwartz has what you need, okay? So I'm definitely gonna um, put that link and all of that um, stuff to get to your course and your videos down below so everyone can have access to that. Um, is it a free course? Is there like a certain premium for it? Yeah, sure. So I have a free course available as a, as a sample so folks can see what it's like, aside from, of course, the LSAT Unplugged YouTube channel, podcast, Facebook group, Instagram, and all that. But I've also got paid courses as well with the live classes included. And so I'll include a link for those too. Cool, 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 cool. That's awesome. Yeah, I wish I would have been able to like ask questions. I think that's what the issue was also, was that like I was just looking at these videos and just, you know, getting all this information overload and I couldn't ask any questions about it. And I could, but they wouldn't get back to you for like another week or so. And it was just, it was rough, it was rough. And I was told like, okay, that's probably why you didn't do so well because like, that's not your learning style. You can't just like, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, you gotta find what, what fits you best. I mean, for some people it's, it's recorded videos, for others it's live videos, for others it's written materials, like books and guides and such. And so I've got something for everybody there so folks can pick and choose what they like. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So yeah, I, um, you rocked it, honestly. I don't have any more questions for you. Um, I think we're there. We cover pretty much everything uh, as, far as, as far as what I think. Is there anything else you would like to share or like just any advice you wanna give? The last go. thing I'll say is, I mean, I think we covered everything too, and I appreciate all the great questions. I think at this point, folks can feel free to reach out to me directly and personally. If they have any questions at all, I'm a real person. I read every email myself, every DM myself, and I do what I can to help. Otherwise, there's the links that will include like the free course, the live online course, course as well, and other resources too. So folks, check those out. Email me with any follow-ups. I'm here to help. Boom, period. You heard it. So yeah, so definitely hit him up. He's very resourceful. Just like even with these collabs, like super resourceful, super great human being to work with and just to learn from. So I would definitely recommend Steve Schwartz as well. Um, so yeah, but that is all we have for today. Um, I'm your Ordinary Jay signing off and I will have another video for you guys next week. And Steve keeps the videos coming and keeps the videos rolling. So Look in the look in the description for his information and definitely check him out, people. He's awesome.